Yo, this is sparing myself the pain, a rundown of all the negative things that I'll miss out on by being a marriage-free and child-free woman. Let's get into it. Painful thing number three, nightmare in-laws. Okay, there are like a lot of different ways that in-laws can be nightmares, but the ones that really um, would piss me off and make me... um seriously want to like take a baseball bet to furniture and people is having in-laws that are incredibly disrespectful and bigoted in any way like they are either racist or you know openly sexist you know they make really really um asshole remarks about uh immigrants or they make comments like oh well women should you know be pregnant and barefoot in the kitchen things like that i would just snap you know, uh, dealing with people who, like, makes a bunch of snide remarks about you and your relationship, like, they insinuate that you're not good enough for your husband, you know, um, if you, um, if you look on Reddit at all, there's, like, a subreddit called, uh, Just No Mother-in-Law, um, I couldn't imagine being in that position, you know, you marry a man and then his mother is just a complete bitch, to you for no reason, just always criticizing you, uh, never satisfied, just always interfering in, in your relationship and purposely trying to break you up. Um, yeah, like giving his cell phone number to like an ex girlfriend of his or something, like trying to hook him up with, you know, the daughters of their friends, like you know, trying to sabotage your marriage because they feel like you just aren't good enough. Especially if you marry uh, someone of a different race, a different nationality, a different religion. Oh my goodness. Okay, I am not a religious person at all. So I would not likely marry someone who is religious. But we can just say hypothetically, um, you're an agnostic or something. Even an atheist. And you marry somebody who has a very religious Christian family or something like that. Catholic people. Um... Baptist people, Pentecostal people like that, you know, your spouse is not religious either, they are just really indifferent to it, but their family, their parents and siblings are really deep into it, and they just, they're just complete assholes about it, always quoting Bible verses at you whenever you visit, um, trying to, like, get your kids baptized behind your back, um, trying to indoctrinate your kids behind your back, stuff like that. I just, oh my goodness, that would piss me off so much. Um, and you, and also dealing with in-laws, like, you know, the parents-in-law or siblings-in-law who are, you know, leeches, they expect money. And in some cultures, it's normal for adult children to give their um, parents an allowance or something. I would never, ever, ever marry somebody who thinks it's okay to do that. But just imagine having adult in-laws like adult brothers-in-law adult sister-in-laws who expect money they expect handouts they expect to be housed they just they expect all of these unlimited favors in in, in return for nothing and it's like oh you should do this because family but if you ever ask them for a favor they are um unable to do it for whatever reason they're too busy or they don't have it they're just you know unable to reciprocate that would piss me off a lot and also having nieces and nephews-in-law, like the the children of my husband's siblings that act like feral animals. Okay, I wouldn't want them in my house. Okay, the kids in my family, they're really on a lot, but they act civilized indoors. They know what is expected of them when they go into somebody else's house. But of course, you know, you have your nieces and nephews on that other side of the family that are allowed to act like you know, some wild beasts out of the jungle, you know, they run in the house, they're jumping on the furniture, they're, you know, just pulling stuff out of the cabinets, out of the refrigerator, drawing on the walls, and, like, no one says anything, and if you say anything, they're gonna get upset, like, oh, you are, you can't discipline my child, you know, we're the parents here, you don't, you don't get to tell them no, you don't get to say anything to them, like, I would not want them in my house, you know, I'm expected to host events, a host like holidays or whatever, birthday parties, anything like that, or they're just in town for whatever. But I'm supposed to open my house up to these unruly brats who are destructive and breaking my shit. 
And then if I get upset about it and tell them to stop, I would be the villain. Fuck that shit. Fuck all of that shit. They can go and sleep outside for all I care. I would pitch a tent in the yard that they can sleep in. No, they can stay outside if they don't know how to act like civilized people in somebody else's house. And then, you know, the other things that you have to deal with with in-laws, of course, is um, them being intrusive. Not just intruding in your relationship, but trying to, like, intrude in your house. Like, just inviting themselves to your house without calling first. That is just something that I am not willing or prepared to tolerate, you know. Some people don't mind. They're like, yeah, well, family is family. They can stop by and visit. But, like, no. No, if I'm busy if or if I don't feel like being bothered, no, you can't just show up and expect to be invited in and, you know, being served tea and cookies. Like, no, you need to ask, not tell, ask if it's okay to stop by first. Not to just show up. Um, the same thing goes to, like, um, dates or outings. You know, you have some people who are actually rude enough to try to invite themselves to a dinner you know, you decide to, um, you tell your family, oh, well, we're going to, you know, this place for, you know, the weekend or whatever. And then to have your in-laws try to invite themselves along. Like, oh my God, I would snap. Okay, I wouldn't even be nice about it and, you know, try to, you know, say, oh, well, this is sort of a husband-wife kind of deal. No, I would just say, point blank, we didn't invite you. And we didn't invite you because we don't want you there. It's like, you know, once you get to a certain age, you should have better manners than that. Like, you should know not to invite yourself anywhere, really. That, you know, if the people who made plans and wanted you there, they would invite you. And if they don't invite you, it's probably because they don't want you around. You know, it's not because they hate you. It's because they just don't want you there for that one event or in that one place. And it just blows my mind that people do this. And then one other thing, like the worst thing, of course, you know, out of all of this that I've already discussed is of, of abuse of any kind, really, whether it's verbal, physical, emotional, sexual abuse. You know, families, for the most part, try to keep family business within the family. They, they won't air out their own dirty laundry. That is one thing that I hate. I hate this, you know, this belief that, you know, whatever happens in the family should stay in the family. It should never be discussed with anybody else. That is the reason why abuse is swept under the rug. Because nobody wants to deal with the humiliation or with the judgment from other people. You know, they'd rather just, oh, well, just keep quiet about it. And, you know, they tell the victims to just, you know, suck it up, get over it, be the bigger person. And to not make a huge fuss about it. But I can imagine marrying somebody um, and seeing this sort of abuse being, you know aimed at anybody really not just kids but at adults you know if you have the uh parents-in-law the mother-in-law the father-in-law who's being you know verbally abusive to their own adult children that i'm supposed to just stand there and act like you know i don't know this one that i'm not bothered by it and it's just like no i'm not going to i'm not going to be that person because if you don't condemn you condone and if you just stand by and don't try to intervene at all then you're pretty much saying that what they're doing is acceptable you know, you're going to a family event and you see your brother-in-law just slaps the fuck out of, you know, his daughter because she, she mumbled something under her breath. And it's like, no, I don't want to be around these people. Okay, I'm not the turn a blind eye, deaf ear type of person to any kind of mistreatment or, you know, just asshole behavior in general. It's like, I don't want to be around these people. You know, it's like... I, I I really wish that one thing about American society specifically would change that, you know, parents are allowed to treat their children like, you know, belongings, like property, like they're not even people, like they don't have to give them any kind of respect. I hate this. I really, really hate it. And it's just not something that I'm willing to ignore or, you know, sweep under the rug and brush it aside like it's no big deal. It is a big deal to me specifically because it's something that I experienced myself. You know, I grew up being treated like, you know, like a pet or a thing, not like a person. So uh, witnessing something like that, witnessing another child or even an adult child being treated this way would piss me off. And I would probably snap and just be, you know, uninvited from everything 
going forward, they would just decide, well, you know, don't bring your wife around anymore because she doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut. And they wouldn't be wrong because I wouldn't keep my mouth shut. You know, assholes de deserve to be called out. Asshole be behavior should be, you know, condemned whenever possible. So that's just it. Nightmare in-laws would just make for a very unpleasant life. And, you know, that's just one thing that I'll never have to deal with.